Hey everyone, what's going on? Jeremy Vane here. I wanted to go over stand-up paddleboard fishing board setups. In stand-up paddleboard fishing, you can use any stand-up paddleboard. There's so many different accessories you can bring to the table, and there's companies that are making add-ons, which makes any board a board that you can use out on the water to fish from. I started on a regular recreational shape. I messed around on race boards, and then eventually I moved towards a stand-up paddleboard fishing specific board. Um, currently I'm using an NSP O2 Fisherman but I also spent some time on the O2 Touring board and the reason why I went back and forth between both of these boards um, is because of the connection with Scotty Mounts. Um, Scotty Mount is a product that came already built into the board and both of these boards are inflatables um, so it makes the travel aspect super easy. They fold up into a duffel bag uh, with a three-piece paddle and you can travel anywhere in the world with your fishing gear and with your boat Which makes it super fun and super easy to travel with So I'm going to jump right into these boards on the left right here is the O2 Fisherman and on the right is the O2 Touring for 2019 We're going to have some new models coming out. So stay tuned for that. But for right now I just wanted to show people how I set up my fishing board Again, as I mentioned, the Scotty Mount. So that's where I'm gonna start with. How do I turn these plain looking SUPs into a fishing machine? And it comes with some setups. So the first couple of things that I grab, and I all started building it um, basically in baby steps. So I started just with rod holders. So the rod holders, they go into these mounts in the back and you buy these accessories, these little squares, and they go right onto the base plates. This will go right in there and then attach and we're good to go. This mount is actually a click mount, super easy and efficient, and it just will click right in. Boom, there we go. So those are the rod holders. Now the next piece, this is something that I kind of created after being on the water a bunch of times and having, oh, I need this or I need that. So this thing sticking up in the air is actually for my fish finder which I'll set up later on um, this right here is for my GoPro and this is the bait stand the bait mount and obviously I have my pliers connected to it um, so this all right here is super easy I have a three-way setup from Scotty in the L bracket and all I do is set it right here on this front mount and away we go So that's the Scotty mounts setting the board up. Now I'm gonna add the other features. The next piece that I added to my fishing was a dry box. Lots of different companies out there make dry boxes. Um, I was living in Jupiter, Florida. That's where I spend the winters. Ingle Coolers is right out of there, so I wanted to support a local brand. Um, but there's all kinds. What I loved about this one was it's a cooler, it's a dry box, it also is a rod holder. So instantly I got four more rod holders. What I do, depending on which board I'm using it on, it both I put them on the tail. Um, the reason I put them on the tail is it makes casting a lot easier. When it's on the front of the board, you're always battling with the rods in front of you. So if it's on the back, it's not even in the way of your back cast. So I put it on the tail of the board. And what I do is I just set it down right on the tail and then just the bungee straps will just go over the rod holders. And then away we go. There's enough strength right here so the cooler won't tip over. That's a huge factor. You don't want your cooler tipping over. That'll dump your rods in the water. Okay, so next piece. We'll go with two pieces here. One of them is my tackle box. I went with a very lightweight, easy tackle box to bring everything. I also use my dry box as a tackle box. So I'll tuck this under the front and usually I just once over it one of the diagonal straps just to make sure it stays on there just in case anything happens on the water. That's secured at the front of my board. This thing was the best $250 perch I ever made. Um, this is my Garmin fish finder. Unzip this right here and away we go. Portable fish finder. This will head right down on the front. And then it has a transducer, which then goes to that mount. 
Obviously it doesn't stay sticking in the air when I'm paddling, I unscrew it, I drop it down into the water. Now I have an instant fish finder, depth finder, and water temperature reader. So, and along with that, it also is GPS. So when you fish those lakes that you're not super familiar with, you don't get lost out in the water. The next piece, and this was thanks to my good friends down in Florida, Chad Hinckley and AJ DePhillips has told me about an anchor. Sounds simple, right? I fought it, I didn't want to bring an anchor, I wanted a power pole, all these other things. Those are great options, you can add those. But for 15 bucks, I added an anchor to my system and I'm allowed to fish in any wind. I fished in nasty currents in the ocean, I've been out in 25 mile an hour winds in Florida and it's really been a super beneficial piece. That's that. Now, with everything set up the way it is, you need rods, right? So I go a little bit excessive and a little crazy. I bring out six rods on the water. Some of you may ask why, it's simple. The more, the more fishing I do and the less knot tying I do, the better I am. And because of this setup on the boat, it's very easy to fish with six rods. So that's the setup right here, guys. If you have any questions, let me know. Again, stay tuned. We're going to be coming out with some 2019 products that I think are going to be really exciting to talk about. But these are my sup fishing boards and the setup.